African Renaissance. The concept that the African people and nation shall overcome the current challenges confronting the continent and achieve cultural, scientific, and economic renewal is here, with young men and women taking the lead. Some call them the new school heroes. We call them under 40 CEOs. My name is Aldu. Um, I'm a passionate Nigerian, and um, I really love to spend time talking to people and also hearing people's views about business. Um, and business is important, and I think it's, business is important not because of the money, but because of the impact that businesses have. Um, and I always look at business as a, a means to an end, and that end is to make life better for people. I want to start off by going to church, by letting you understand that the reason why you're alive today is not because you want to go to heaven. Let's be clear about that. Because many people get it wrong. You think that God created you so that you can go to heaven. So you do Islam or Christianity, pray 79 times a day, go for all the um, vigils, and then you die and then you float to heaven. That's not what you're here for. You're here to change people's lives. You're here to impact people. And I think that business is one of those tools by which you can impact people. There are people whose lives have changed because of the existence of one or two companies, right? MTNs, the banks, and et cetera, have changed our lives because we can communicate. So if you say that Mark Zuckerberg doesn't belong in heaven, I don't know who belongs in heaven. <laughs> I know you think about the other people who have done great things. So that's what business is here for. Uh, but so I'm talking today about critical tools for business success in Nigeria. So this is the model successful entrepreneur. Who wants to be like that? Put your hands. <laughs> Just chilling, sipping champagne, you know, dollars flowing, especially in this time that the Naira is very tough. You know, this is what it looks like, right? Ah, some girls are really putting up their hands like this. You know, like, <laughs> their hands are not going to come down. So any seasoned entrepreneur will tell you that, you know, you need to have some naivety, you know, some boldness, some passion. You know, that's enough, right? Those are the ingredients for success. But not in Nigeria. We have issues. So that's what it is. But let me tell you what entrepreneurs do. They solve problems. That's your job. If they say, what's your job description? We solve problems. Simple. And if you understand that, then you're in business. Because if your business does not solve a problem, then why? It's not a business, it's a charity. In fact, even charities solve problems, don't they? So the future CEOs that I see in this room today are going to solve a problem for Nigeria. And you're going to solve a problem for your community and for your people. But it starts from being a solution, not being a problem. Because you only talk about the problems. No light, but is not around, this is um, traffic. Guess what? Some guy created Google Maps so you can navigate traffic. When somebody said that there's no light, somebody created a solar uh, panel so they can power things. So if you understand that your job is to solve problems, then guys, you're already in business. In fact, we can stop right here. But if you think your, your job is to moan and groan, then you're becoming an average Nigerian who does not solve problems. You see, there's an area for innovation, there's an area for enterprise. But the best businesses uh, combine innovation and enterprise. Innovation is creating something out of nothing or making things better. And enterprise is just the process of trying to you know, uh, make money off of or start a venture and create, solve some problem. But those two together are the ideal. So the reason why you go to Google today is because it does what? It solves a problem. And so today we don't want to live without solving problems. And of course, everybody wants to be successful. Those people that don't want to be successful, put up your legs. <laughs> so what do you need to be successful? Is it connections? 20 years in Nigeria, if you didn't have connections, you'd be dead. I dare say even now, if you don't have connections, you may be half dead. Um, startup capital, and that's, that's something that everybody, you know, everybody, sometimes I get a lot of Instagram, not, not sometimes, most times. So I need 100,000, 200, 2 million, 10 million dollars to start a business. I'm looking at them like, if I had 10 million dollars, you'll not be able to DM me in the first place. <laughs> you know, is it creativity that you need? Is it skills? Is it, you know, the ability? Are those the things that you need to be successful? Yes? But is that enough? It's a bit more than that. So, in this journey, 
there are men and there are boys. I know in this room there are men and girls, or men and women, but in life's journey, there are only men and boys. The boys talk the talk, the men walk the walk. Who are you going to be today? Are you going to go on? Because, listen, no light, no problem, we move on. Nobody gives me money, no problem, we move on. I don't believe in your idea, no problem, we move on. You have to keep on keeping on. Listen, all the people that are seeing sat in front, and many of you here, have gone through hell and back. But you're still here. And the difference between the men and the boys is that men leave the room. Sorry, the boys leave the room, the men stay. And they don't care what the situation is, they're going to get it done regardless. And if you think you're going to be successful by having a breezy journey in life, then you're a failure already. Because the success is measured by the number of challenges you overcome. As I stand here, I have a million problems. Hmm? But you're not seeing my face. Because I was born to solve problems. And that's how your, your, your psyche should be. So when problems come, don't start complaining. Oh God, this is... oh No. That is the job. That's what you signed up for. Okay? So, it's not easy, especially in Nigeria. There's so many issues. And of course, you've identified some of those issues. But... Let's talk about some of the things that you need to help your business work. Whatever idea it is, you need some skill. You need to look at the potential. You need to be creative. And creativity, I always say that if you don't have big money, you must have big ideas. Because it's through creativity that you can overcome uh, some of these things. Of course, perseverance is important. Um, I was watching a clip by Denzel Washington last week. And he said, if you fall seven times, you get up what? Eight times. I dare say ten times. Because you will keep falling. But the people that keep standing will be the guys that persevere in the, to the end and they get the final prize. You guys saw the Lagos Marathon, Abby? Did Nigeria make any impact? No. Why? Because we could not endure. I'm not saying we are, we are not enduring people. I'm just simply saying that the person who won was not the fastest, was not the strongest, was the person who endured the longest. So this game is a last, last game. It's not about the first, first. Anybody can come and jump and make noise. In the beginning, in the beginning of the race, we were running hey, in muscle. You see what people, Nike, these things. <laughs> By the time they got to miles 56, or what is it, kilometer 56, you see their tongues hanging on the floor and all that stuff. Because that is not it. It's a long-term play, guys. So looking at business, these are a couple of things I think you need to think about. As you're structuring your business, idea is important, but is it a tenable idea? Does it work? Investment is important, but who's going to invest? If you're not investing in yourself, why should I invest in you? Many people call, walk up and say, sir, please, I have this business, it's very brilliant, but I want to... How much do you have? How much have you put in? Do not give us something that costs you nothing, because it's still nothing. It must cost you something. Find valuable partners. And, and when you think about partnership, I'll give you a simple example. Look at this event. Isn't this a beautiful event, guys? Can you put your hands together for my, my brother, Babs? And he's been on this hustle. He's done many businesses. Do you know that this guy was a member executive of Tribesmen with LD the Don? When people like us were still watching uh, their videos on TV with our mouths agape. Think about that transition to what we're doing now. But remember that he had to have partners. This event is partnered by people like Fidelity Bank, Abby. This hotel is a partner as well. Several other people have come together. Without that partnership, this event would not happen. I just had some very expensive tea by the corner. I think I even sold a tea bag or two. I really like that tea. But I had it only because there's a partnership between these guys and the bank. What if he was going to pay this thing by himself? Now, this point is very important. I always tell people about businesses that business is about partnerships. And these partnerships are the core of success. Do you know why? Because when one is weak, the other can hold the other one. Sometimes when you want to pay your rent, your, and I'll give you a simple example. So your rent is 2 million naira, you have 2.5 million naira in your whole life, right? But you want to be CEO. You want to have the biggest office in the place, I be. So when they come to that guy's office, you know, that's a big boy, right? And then you have a friend who also wants to do a business. Also has 2.5 million naira. What if you guys just 
put that 2.5 million naira together and got one office and split it equally? What if you split the telephone bills, the light bills, and the secretariat bills? What if you collocated and got staff who would do the same thing? You would have saved enough money now for it to plow back into your marketing, right? Into your website, into your customer service. In fact, you'd have probably made a profit by just saving that money. But we've been taught that unless you're the chairman, nobody cares. It's a lie. It's a big lie. So say to your neighbor, it's a lie. <laughs> say you're a liar. I'm not kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But, but you get the point. The point is that it doesn't matter what you do. You see, a man cannot be bigger than his job. Do you hear me? You cannot be bigger than your job. Sometimes you spend time on a fizzy and we're not worried about the real product. Listen, the only reason why I'm sitting here today and standing in front of you is because I've toiled hard and I've had some rough days. I've entered buses. I've entered from Obalende to uh, what they call that place, where they sell um, Alaba markets before. And guess what? I'll do it again. Because I can never be too big, too big for my job. But when you forget where you came from, then you don't know where you're going to. So these are some of the things. I don't, I'm not going to talk too long because we need to be quick. But um, success doesn't come to you. You go to it. Right? Vision without execution is hallucination. Have you heard that before? You are so, you're so, so, you are so visionary. Everyday visions. Hmm? In fact, 3D visions, 4D visions. Man, you're just seeing this vision I had, man. It was crazy. I remember one time in church, my pastor told me something. He said, and he was talking to the church, and he said, he said, and I think I, I tweeted it one time. Who follows me on Twitter here? This is very poor. I'm leaving. <laughs> so my, my Twitter handle is at Aldo. Follow me. It's very simple. At Aldo. Sometimes I get in trouble. Sometimes I win. But I'm Aldo. No apologies whatsoever it is. So I'll tell you what. So my, 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 I tweeted this once. So the pastor said, some of you sit down and you have great entrepreneurial ideas. We'll build a hospital. The hospital will have gold sidewalk. When you get there, the elevator will take you to the first bed. Then the nurse will automatically come as a robot and give you injection and move back. He said, while you're doing this, the woman selling Akara by the roadside is doing more business than you. Start business and keep moving. It will not be perfect and it can never be perfect. But keep moving. Because if all you're doing is saying that you want the perfect time to do it, guys, the perfect time never comes. And that's why I'm saying it's hallucination. Because you're seeing things that nobody's seen. Imagine me talking about owning a company and then you have never seen the company. Is my time up? Because, but, ah, you guys, tell him more because... The, the way you were looking like, get off the stage, man. Hurry up. <laughs> you know, so if I keep talking about a company, and you, okay, you guys have heard of inside communications. Who knows inside the communications? If you don't know inside communications, then you, I think the, the event is over for you. You need to go out there. But imagine that you keep hearing this name, and you have never seen one work they've done. You've never seen their office. You've never seen the campaign they've run. Isn't that hallucination? The mad people on the street that jump on the street and are performing concerts by themselves, it's hallucination. Do you know why? There's no evidence or proof of what they're saying. So we must move from talking about these business ideas to action. We must collaborate because we need each other now more than before. We must become less pompous about who we think we are and be realistic about who we really are. Because who you are is a function of what you have done. So if you have done nothing, then why are you talking and disturbing us on Twitter? Shut up. Get things done. Because success is always about getting things done. Don't make a mistake about that. But I also want to show you that there are other opportunities beyond being an entrepreneur. You can come to a company and be an intrapreneur. And what it means is that you're bringing value to the existing company. And that's how some people have negotiated wealth in their lives. By coming to a company and saying, do you know what? We're going to change this place. I want to negotiate my percentage. My percentage is 20%. Can you do that for me? And automatically their lives have changed. So this old pride, this old definition of entrepreneur was a person who takes a risk by himself and starts a business. I appreciate that what you told you in economics, in, in, in secondary school, whatever it is. It's not true. It's not true. So this is my favorite quote. Uh, Winston Churchill is a guy I read. I'm actually reading a book about him now. 
Um, and he said that success is the ability to go from one failure to another with no loss of enthusiasm. <laughs> I think it's absolutely brilliant. Don't get, don't lose it. I mean, you've lost so what? So I'll tell you guys a secret story. Don't record this story, please. The very yeah. Eh? Okay, then I have to cancel that story, guys. Sorry. Sorry. Do you guys want to hear the story? No, some people are looking like they're boring. Just get out. So let me tell you this story. Uh -huh, that's more like it. <laughs> There's something that... So let me tell you a story, right? Real story. So I went to... When I was a jam bite, at the University of Joss. Who went to the University of Joss here? Yeah. Any blessed people? God bless you. You know, so I went to the University of Joss and... Um, as a jam bite, you know, you're going to your first party, and that party, jam girls are not there. It's older, like year two, year three people. So you come in there, of course you're skinny. So, you, okay, now I'm not really fat, but you can imagine how skinny I was. Skinny, big head, you know, all that stuff. And so we go to a party, and then, you know, then, when you go to a party, from KC days, when you go to a party, you have to perform. And perform means you can't sit down and be jonesy and be nursing your... your um, Drink. You have to dance, Abby. And the more girls you dance with, the more correct you are. So, so, so we got there with four of my friends, and when we got there, like, okay, so we need to perform more. But how do you perform? We don't know any of these girls, and they, they will know where jam bites. It's clear where jam bites, you know. So I said, anyway, let's just do it. So they all, we all went our separate ways. So I went to the first girl. Hey, hi, what's up? Can we dance? She said no. Second girl, hey, what's up? Can we dance? No, don't worry. It's not really you. <laughs> it's not really you. So I'm like, okay, but let me look at the girl. I guess, it, I guess it's better I be. So I'm like, hey, do you want to dance? That's her face. The way your face is exactly what you did. <laughs> She's like, no. Uh, third, no. Fourth. Uh, by that time, I was on a roll. So I went to six, seven, eight. I just kept on going. <laughs> and after a while, they got her and said, Okay, fine, we'll dance, you know, that kind of thing. And when I started dancing with the first girl, all the other girls wanted to dance with me thereafter. It's an interesting lesson. Is that when you fail, just keep on going. Because somebody will say yes. And when they say yes and the people see you moving, they'll say, ah, this guy's a correct guy, let's dance with him too. So if one of you dance with you as a business, you must start. And you can fail, but never stop. Because the true winners keep on doing it, no matter what happens. So that is it. I didn't lose my enthusiasm. Imagine if I came in very dry, like, this girl said I shouldn't dance, I mean, she wouldn't dance with me, but please, can you, can you find it in your heart to please dance with me? <laughs> Nothing. So I became bolder, actually, as I was nailed several times. As they tell you your business plan will not work, as they tell you that it's, it's, it's impossible, I tell you that uh, this guy failed. You must make up your mind that this is what you want to do. But I don't want you to be stubborn, stupid, Leo. Be very careful. Don't go and do something. If, for example, you are saying now you want to start your own MTN. <laughs> <laughs> At this time. You can do something better. But don't try and battle MTN. Because guess what? They have first mover advantage. They're solidified. So you must look for something that's different, that's special, that gives you an advantage. In the next series, our partner, the next series, I want to talk to you about strategy. That's something I really do a lot of work on. But now you pay, it's not this one that we drinking free Coke and all that stuff. You guys are going to pay for that. But so let me talk about the, what's, what's uh, The Usual Suspects of the film? It's a very old film. The Usual Suspects. Who knows Kaiser Soze? Hey, Jesus, okay. But anyway, so the, the thing about The Usual Suspects is that the guy who masterminded his calm was the least suspected person. He was so well covered that people didn't believe him. In fact, they thought he was a cripple or something like that. Meanwhile, he was the guy who was behind the whole killings and etc. And the usual suspects in your life are the following. You will fail at some point in time or the other. You will get frustrated. People will not believe in you. Your friends may even laugh at you. You will never have enough money. Please repeat that. You will never have enough money. If you go and ask Dan Gote, Dan Gote will say, ah, no money. Abi, he'll tell you that. Because relative to what he needs to do, the money is never enough. 
But what if it didn't start at all? Would we be a dangote today? No. You just need to start with what you have. You'll never have enough time. Many times I sit down and rack my head about how I can manage my time. But I find that no matter how many public holidays they give me, nothing happens. I never have enough time. And then you'll never be 100% success, but be sure that you're not 100% failure either. Life is about moderation. It's about finding a balance. So how do you overcome? If success is in your mind, then failure is where? It's in your mind too. As you think, so shall it be. So we must begin to think about how we can be successful regardless of those challenges that we have. So, um, okay, but what I'll do, I'll make this slide available to you guys so you can see it. What is the circle? You have an idea, you try it out, it fails, you correct, you continue. And in that cycle comes perfection. You keep doing it over and over until you become better at doing what you're doing. So, when I said that execution is everything, execution means action. And I always tell my team, if you don't have action, you're wasting your time. You must get things done. In Nigeria, what are we complaining about from a leadership perspective that our leaders are not getting things done? Let's be honest about that. Yeah. Now, when you think about Lagos State, for example, I don't know much about the Lagos, uh, politics of Lagos State. I'm more into the Kaduna State government um, uh, politics, for example. And if you follow me, you'll see my position. But I know something. I've seen roads in Lagos that have been fixed before that I never knew that they would ever be fixed before. True? Yeah. We are seeing bridges and roads. I don't care what Ambode is doing. I just know that he's working. He doesn't have to come and say, well, Lagos say we're preparing. No, there's no talk. He's just acting. Am I correct? Yeah. And that is what success is about. Let your work speak for itself. Before Mark Zuckerberg became Mark Zuckerberg, you just knew of Facebook, Abby. The work spoke for itself. It's now recently that he's waking up and coming up there. He say, oh, that's Mark Zuckerberg. Get involved with getting the work done. Too many of you are on Instagram posting rubbish, wasting people's time and having Instagram film, uh, film personalities. We don't need that. When your company is performing, nobody needs to know who you are. They could say, oh, are you the guy behind this? But if it's always, are you the company behind this man? <laughs> There's a problem. So this formula could be useful, depending on how you apply this, is that the success pattern is that you have what an intention for action. Then you do action. Then you succeed. Failure pattern is this. You intend to do action. There's a caveman that says, hmm, I have a better idea. Let's do it this way. Then you're caught between two people trying to get that perfect idea. And before you know it, there's a different action. And then there's what? Failure. So it's very important. It's very important to understand that we must trick ourselves into action. We must outsmart ourselves. Because we're too smart for ourselves sometimes. We overthink it. It's, it's not perfect. And I, I'll tell you, I have a problem with that. I have a problem, but I've tried to struggle to make sure that I get out of that. So let's move from thought to action. Let's see how we can get out that right quickly. Right? So we, we, go, we pick a goal that we really want. We make a quick action plan, and we know the steps that need to be taken. Then we start with the first step immediately. These first steps are very important. I'll tell you something. If you don't start with the first step, you can never take the second or 20th step. It only starts with one. Always one. So you take the first step. So I'll tell you what. There are times that we've committed to projects without having a concrete plan because we knew if we overthought it, we'd never get it done. So we announced and said, we're doing this. And every day at meeting, like, yeah, we said we're going to do this. So this is not looking good. But we're under pressure. But as long as it's in our folder, in our notebook, then it is just something that we're hiding. You understand what I'm saying? So we need to force ourselves to get things done. Then take massive action and observe what's going, both in your thoughts and behavior. Discover the failure patterns. Once discovered, break the failure patterns. Stack the deck in your favor as much as possible. Transform them into success patterns. Go back to four. Repeat until the goal is achieved. Okay? My final thoughts are you must build a team. You must review and revise your vision. Understand that your vision must also be relevant. What if I had a brilliant idea? So I woke up one day and said, I believe that man can fly. I want to invent an aeroplane. 
Are you getting me? The Wright brothers did that almost a thousand hundred years ago. So you must review your plan because things change very quickly, especially in this world now. As you're talking about your idea, somebody's already doing it. So if you're, if you're not reviewing your plan, then you may be coming up with an obsolete plan that is totally useless for you and you're wasting time doing that. So you must be doing that. And also notice that as you're reviewing your plan, you must be in touch with the goings on. I don't know if you guys read newspapers. Please avoid just reading tweets and Facebook posts from various artists and writers and authors. Go and look for real books. That's research that you can authenticate and trust. Because there's so much false information out there and there's stuff that are not relevant to you. So the best people read widely. You must know something about almost everything. You can't just know, you can't just say, yeah, I'm a doctor, so I only know about uh, uh, anesthesia. How? You know, so you need to expand your scope. Then train your people and train yourself. Go to school. Don't, don't be satisfied with what they taught you in school. Keep learning. And I, and I think it's very, very important. Continuing education. Execution. Very, guys, if there's anything you're going to take away today, execute. Right? This event has been executed, Abby. Now, I don't know if Fab has a team. I don't know whether he has reviewed his vision. I don't know whether he planned or not. I don't know whether he trains his people. But I know he has delivered an event here today. He executed it. And I can feel that brand. And tomorrow it comes to my mind. Until we execute, we're wasting our time. That's the biggest problem in most businesses. We don't execute. Big, big plans, no execution. Then be persistent. Don't say, take no. Keep on keeping on. Finally, without God, none of this is possible. For me, and I tell you that, I'm a testimony of that. Um, whatever I've achieved and the things that, I, that, that I'm going to achieve, they're based on this belief in God. But I don't believe in God foolishly. When people come and tell you, you do it by the grace of God. No, God has given you the grace. Go and exercise the grace. But it's like somebody has put a bolt, like a platinum card in your pocket. Go shopping. You're in Harrods or wherever it is. Then you say, by God's grace, I will spend money. <laughs> it's in your pocket. It's yours. So you must what? Execute. Without the execution, God's grace is useless to you because it's already been freely given to you. It's like air. If you don't breathe it, you will die. You don't go and say, please, can you pump some more air here? No, it's there. Thank you very much. Bye.